everything is just saturated. That is everybody's favorite word these days when it comes to putting out content. The thing is though, that your content has to cut through the noise of all of the other content. What's up beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Erin and this is Erin On Demand, a place for entrepreneurs and content creators looking to build your brand, business, and impact. And today, y'all, we are talking all about how to effectively promote your business this year. And this is something that a lot of people struggle with. A lot of times we get so scared to promote our own businesses. We feel that people are going to unfollow us or we feel that we're pushing our business too much and are being too salesy. But think about how often you are promoting other businesses. When you get that coffee in the morning and you take a little picture of it, or when you have a cute outfit on and you're, you know, you tag the company who you got it from. Those are things that are promoting other people's businesses and we do it a lot of the time without even realizing. Really put into perspective how frequently you're promoting other people's businesses and then think about how frequently you promote yours. A lot of times we under promote our own businesses. It is equally as ineffective to under promote your business as it is to over be overly salesy. So in this video, I'm going to be giving some tips that you can implement into your marketing strategies to really begin to push your business out in an effective way. The first thing I recommend doing is doubling down on two social media platforms. And I say specifically two because when you're a solopreneur or a a small business, a startup, a lot of times you don't have a full social media team. Heck, you might not even have one person helping you with social media or anything in your business. So it becomes difficult to try to be on everything and be doing everything effectively on every platform. I don't say don't explore with other platforms. I think it's great to explore with other platforms, but for the most part, your focal point should be in two places. And I always say choose a long form content platform which would be your YouTube where you can promote long valuable videos or a blog where it's longer written content or a podcast and pair it with a platform that is more short form content like an Instagram, a Twitter, Facebook, places where you can kind of bounce off of each other and one promotes high value and the other promotes high engagement. That is one of my biggest tips. I mentioned it in several other videos, but I think if you really find a focal point on which platforms actually make sense for me to be on, then you can effectively promote your business. There are so many businesses who are not taking advantage of Pinterest, of LinkedIn, of TikTok, of all of these other platforms that your information and your content would thrive on. You're just simply in the wrong place. So one of the biggest tips I have is to figure out where should I be? What social media platforms even make sense for me to be on for this type of business? And just for the record, I do have a full live lesson in my eBrand Club that breaks down all the nitty gritty of which social media platforms are best for what type of business and just some more insight on in-depth information of which platforms make the most sense for certain things. The second thing I recommend is having content marketing that really stands out. So a lot of times we will hear people say that it is so crowded, everything is saturated, YouTube is saturated, blogs are saturated, everything is just saturated. That is everybody's favorite word these days when it comes to putting out content. So one way you can make your content stand out is by going more in depth. You have to give depth instead of breadth because a lot of content that people are spewing out is very baseline content. So if you can go more in depth and give people more value and kind of answer the questions that they may be thinking and you're kind of thinking ahead of them, that definitely helps. And I think that has been a big reason why I have been able to grow this channel so, so fast because I give you guys a lot of information. I go pretty in depth with all of the things that I talk about and therefore you feel trust in me and you are able to find high value in my content. Answering the questions before your viewer or, or consumer even asks them is always going to help. The second way that you can kind of cut through the noise with your content and really stand out is by adding a different perspective, especially if you are skilled in a different perspective. So for example, um, I did a strategy call with a woman who 
is amazing at natural hair care and breaking down different ingredients. She's a chemist. And so she has all of this scientific knowledge on why certain products work, why certain ingredients are or aren't good for your hair. She had a couple of videos where she was wearing her white coat in the thumbnail and she actually referred to herself as a chemist's point of view in the title and those were the videos that popped the most, but she didn't do it for every video. You really wanna make sure you're wearing your perspective on your sleeve as much as possible. Natural hair care and beauty may be considered a very saturated market on YouTube or in content marketing, but not everybody is a chemist and has that scientific background where we can really get in-depth information. Use your perspective to your advantage. And the third thing you can do to make your content marketing really stand out is to have a voice. And I have a full video on how to channel your voice into your content. I just want you guys to know how important it is to embrace who you are. And in these videos, like of course, I speak clearly and I try to articulate as best as I can, but I have fun, y'all. I will, you know, just be myself. I talk how I talk in regular life. Um, and that is what makes you guys enjoy the content is that it feels real and relatable. And so you really wanna bring as much of that to your videos or to your writing or to your podcast as you possibly can. Just don't be boring, y'all. That's a big problem that a lot of content has is it's just straight up boring. So if you can add some oomph, some personality, um, you know, change up your vocabulary, um, just, 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 you know, have fun with it. The next biggest tip I have in terms of promoting your business is mixing soft promotion with harder promotion. So you wanna make sure that you have a good balance where you're not always asking for the sale, but you're also not scared to ask. So here's an example. I would say even when you're email marketing or posting on social media or writing your blog or, you know, whatever kind of content you are creating, don't always ask for the sale in every single post. You can make mention of things just like how I plug the eBrand Club or my strategy calls in this video. I'm giving y'all my secrets, okay? It's a soft promotion where I'm using examples of people that I talk to or things we do in the club. I'm infusing those things into the content so you can keep a mental note. But there are other videos where I may say, you should join the eBrand Club because blah, 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 and I'm hard selling. But there should be a very good balance of both, all right? So you don't wanna oversell but you don't want to not ever mention you know the things that you are doing so for example there was a lady who I did a strategy call with also who has this really holistic type of channel and she sells tea I said girl why are you not drinking tea in every video showing us you know you making a cup of tea it can take five seconds in your video but that can add interest and that can also entice people to want to buy so you really want to be showing off your products and using them use them as much as you can um, whether it's in person if you're doing a you know if you have a show or something and you have a candle company light the candles so people People can smell it as you're having your event you know do things that actually use your products that is soft selling um, and then mix it in with actually asking people to buy really you know figure out what balance works best for you some people say you know every five posts you shouldn't be asking and then every six posts you can ask or do a hard sale. I think you could keep some mental notes of how frequently am I asking people to join my club or asking people to buy my product opposed to just showing them how great it is. And that is still selling. It doesn't have to be so hard. Like I said, taking those pictures in the mirror, you know, showing off your outfit. You weren't saying go buy this shirt right now. But if people like it, they're going to ask you where you got it from and they're going to go buy it on their own. And the same thing applies for everything else we do. The next tip is to capitalize on micro influencers. And a lot of times we want to pitch to people who have tens of thousands of followers and hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And it's like they are literally walking billboards at this point. So most of the time at a certain caliber, people are not going to promote your business for free. Free products is not cash. And a lot of times when people, when you're competing with other big companies who are pitching to influencers, 
um, and they're giving them thousands of dollars, an influencer is not going to wear your cute shirt. I'm sorry. I, I know it's cute. I know your, you know, your earrings are cute, but an influencer who has, you know, a huge following is probably not even going to look at that email. I'm sorry, I'm just being real with y'all. You wanna make sure that you are capitalizing on micro-influencers, which are huge right now. There are so many people who have, you know, even less than 5,000 followers or less than 10,000 followers who are willing to promote your product, who have very niche audiences that would be your dream demographic. And they are often very open to getting free products without necessarily getting thousands of dollars. Maybe they will charge a couple hundred bucks, but it's nothing nearly as competitive as these huge influencers. So I would highly recommend reaching out to micro influencers in your niche. It will take a little digging. I would say use hashtags, um, search on YouTube, search in Pinterest, and see who you can find. I would say less than 10,000 followers on either YouTube or, or um, Instagram or somewhere around there would be a great benchmark for you to know. Like, are they, do they have an engaged audience? Just peruse, see how good their posts look or how great their videos are. You would be surprised how much of a sales conversion you can get from people with smaller audience whose audiences really trust them. They just may not be, you know, to the masses yet. So catch them in that phase and you can really grow with these types of influencers because as your business grows and as their platforms grow, you can kind of play off of each other. The next thing I would say is know exactly who your business is servicing because when you know who your business specifically is servicing, it makes it so much easier for you, one, to reach out to micro influencers and two, what to say, what to post, all becomes a lot clearer when you have a targeted audience or at least a target audience persona. We don't just say have a target audience or a target audience persona for no reason. Um, it is because it helps so much with your marketing efforts on how you use your voice, how you post, what type of posts you make, who you reach out to to help you promote your business. So all of those things come together and make such a huge difference when you have a target audience persona. The next thing I say would be to have a variety on your social media. So if you do have an Instagram account, I would say post some videos, post some pictures. Um, don't have all super themed like you know, professional pictures. Like you can have some real life pictures. Um, have pictures, not just product shots, but actual people using the products or biting into your cookies or whatever it is. Make sure you're showing people a variety so they can get a well-rounded experience of whatever service or product that you're offering. Same goes for YouTube. Take advantage of YouTube Live, posting on the community page. Really take advantage of all of the areas of these different social media platforms because they're there for a reason. The next thing would be to make it shareable, whether that be an extraordinary unboxing experience or you have a nail salon and you make it look beautiful so that when people come in, they want to take pictures. Um, or if you have an online business and you start creating templates for people to share on Instagram stories, um, different things like I did a top three template because Everybody knows me for the top three now, so I did a top three challenge and people followed along and there was a template with my Instagram name on it and people could fill in their top three for the day. And so, you know, that was a very shareable thing that I created and it doesn't take long, you guys. It's just about thinking outside of the box and how can I get my audience that I currently have to talk about me more. You can't do everything. Like you need your audience talking about you as well. And so a big way to do that is making your content more shareable and making an experience that your audience is excited to share. And my last tip is to tell a story. The biggest, most powerful form of marketing is storytelling. I get the question all the time of Aaron, where did you get all this knowledge from? How do you know all this stuff? I didn't study marketing in school, but I studied broadcast journalism. I applied the fundamental rules of storytelling to everything that I do. If you go read an Instagram caption, if you go watch one of my Insta stories, if you watch my vlogs, 
or anything that I really produce, you will be able to follow along an interesting story. That is the key to building an audience and to building successful marketing strategies is that everything needs to tell a story. And it's not even all about how crystal clear your pictures are, how you know polished your logo and your website looks. It's about can you tap into people's hearts and emotions and really tell a story that captures them and leads them into converting into customers. But most importantly, how are you and your business becoming a part of your customer's story? I would definitely recommend reading the book, Building a Story Brand, and it is by Donald Miller. It really breaks down how to infuse storytelling into your business, especially on your website. I will leave the link to the book in the description box below. So I hope these tips were helpful for you guys. Promoting your business can seem tough, but it's all about you being creative creative, you knowing your business and knowing the type of audience that you have. Because when you do know those things, it makes it so much easier for you to have fun and really push out content that your ideal audience would enjoy consuming. So in the comments, let me know if there's one of these tips that you're going to try within your business because they really do work. And I'm so excited to chat with you guys in the comments. If you like this video and you wanna be a part of my internet home, all you have to do is hit the notification bell because I upload every Wednesday and most Sundays. And um, I just love y'all. So if you are into it, stick around. I'm always here and I would love to have you in the family. Um, also, I go through a lot more of this information in so much depth in my eBrand Club where I have weekly live lessons and it is just such an awesome community. If you are looking for more ways to market and to strategize and to really build a community that is supportive of what you're doing in your business, I would definitely recommend you join the club. All of that information will also be in the description box, but I couldn't end this video without promoting my own business, so there you go, erinondemand.com, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.